Some of you have been here a while now and might know that I'm a pretty lazy man. But how on earth can you have a healthy diet that's also easy and convenient? Well, if you live in the US, it is your lucky day because I've got the perfect solution for you. Vacta offers you the chance to get fresh, ready-made meals delivered directly to your doorstep. They're never frozen, they're full of high quality ingredients and packed with nutritional value too. It even offers meals for those following different lifestyles and diets. So what are you waiting for? Go and click that lovely link at the top of the description now. You'll get plenty of money off your first order with Factor and some off the few after too. You'd be a fool to miss out on an opportunity like that. Hello and welcome to another round of managerial appointments from the Honest Football Podcast. I'm Craig Savage and with me as always is Mr. Daniel Cody. Today we are talking about one of the relegated sides from the Premier League and that is Leicester City. They have appointed Enzo Maresca as their new manager on a three-year deal. Uh, we will get to him shortly, but let's talk about Leicester from the previous season in the Premier League. Uh, Brendan Rodgers is in charge at the start of the season. Got the sack in February, and then they weirdly appointed Dean Smith, who did struggle at Norwich in the Championship last season. And somehow, he was man to keep Leicester in the Premier League and failed. Um, weird appointment for Leicester. Let's let's get the Dean Smith thing out of the way first. Very weird appointment. Yeah, it really was. I mean... Obviously, the Brendan Rodgers decline over the year or so before. I mean, it sort of stemmed back to the Forest Cup tie the season before, didn't it? Where he said, we're going to need to have a big clear out in the summer. And then they didn't have any funds and only ended up signing one or outfield player in the whole window. But then, as you say, they were struggling under Brendan Rodgers. They were in a relegation battle. There was no doubt about that. But when the decision was made for him to go, and whether that's right or wrong is up for other people to decide. But once that decision was made... I don't think many of us would have expected Dean Smith to be the man who was going to come in as the saviour. I know, yes, he'd kept Villa up the first season when he went up with them, but he'd been at the club long term before. And if you look at jobs where he's done well previously, it's been jobs where he's been in long term and he's built a side over two or three years. And when he's gone in towards the midway point of a season at the bottom of the table, like with Norwich the season before, he hadn't done that well. And obviously, he'd just been sacked, as you said, for underachieving in the championship with Norwich in December. So it was a baffling appointment. We did see a lot of clubs down there panic, didn't we? We saw the return of Big Sam. And you've got to be fair to Leicester on the flip side of things. They're the first of the three relegated clubs, albeit three weeks later, to actually sort out their managerial situation and get things in place. So there is some credit there. But yeah, I, I can't disagree with you. It was one of the weirdest appointments you see. They only won two of the eight games under him. Obviously, one of them was the final game of the season where it was already out of their hands. And we know that Leicester have had continuous problems defensively for a couple of years. There was a big thing the previous season about the defending of set pieces with Brendan Rodgers in charge. And this season, obviously, they let Kasper Schmeichel go and goal and didn't really replace him and ended up with sort of championship level keepers, in my opinion. And while they did still have a few stars, there was a sort of dwindling, wasn't there? You had Vardy past his best. You've had constant injuries in that defence, whether it's the forgotten man, Ryan Bertrand, who's now been released, whether it was Johnny Evans, who was a huge miss, someone we know well as Luton fans, James Justin, who continues to get serious injuries. Castagna was out so much of the year. Pereira never really recovered from his previous long-term one. They have been unfortunate in some senses, but the managerial appointment certainly didn't help towards the end of last year. I think we both agree on that. Yeah, I, I'll be honest. I don't think um, there's no way Leicester should have the squad they've got. Yes, they've had the injuries, but they should never have been in that situation. It's, um, it's one of those potentially too good to go down going forward, isn't it? Like the old West Ham of 20 years ago. Well, yeah, like you look at the bottom three. Yeah, Southampton didn't rep uh, recruit well over the, over the summer and then probably hired the wrong guy to take over at the time. And the wrong guy to go over that as well. Um, then you look at Leeds. Leeds were always struggling the last couple of years anyway. So it didn't surprise me that Leeds were going to be down there. But for Leicester's point of view, winning in the FA Cup, not what, two years ago? Well, they, they were in a European semi final the year before. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The yeah. same, yeah. European, what was it? Conference League? Yeah. Conference League um, semi final. And obviously now you think you could build on that. All right. They didn't qualify for Europe this season, but you think you could still. 
pull some weight. And it, unfortunately, it, it, they got suckered into a, a relegation battle. Do you think Brendan Rodgers would have kept them up? It's a, a hypothetical question and it's impossible to tell because let's be honest, most people at the bottom, certainly us from following them in a the championship the year before, I don't think anyone expected Bournemouth to do as well as they did with Gary O'Neill. I don't think many people thought Forrest were going to pick up, albeit most of us said they would probably survive for the most part. But I'm not sure he would have kept them up, but I felt they had, would have had a better chance under him than Dean Smith. And that was my initial reaction when they made the change and went to Smith was, does that give you any better opportunity? And I say the same for Leeds when they sacked Marsh and then bought in Gracia and Allardyce there. I say the same for Southampton when they let Hassan who will go for Jones and Sellis. It's sort of the thing that defined the three clubs that came down, wasn't it? Was poor managerial choices, letting good managers go and maybe bringing in not quite so good ones afterwards. Desperate moves. And well, the Everton uh, Sean Dyche thing just started a run of desperation, didn't it? Because every he they went first and got the manager everyone wanted, and then the rest were left to try and panic after that. Yeah, they, they rolled the dice and uh Got the wrong numbers, I'm for, I'm afraid. But they are unfortunately relegated from the Premier League and back in the Championship. And that's going to be a, one of the hardest Championship seasons I think we'll ever see. Yeah. Um, but Leicester have had to appoint a new man and they have appointed Enzo Maresca as their new manager on a three-year deal. Um, obviously, he just come from Manchester City. He was their assistant manager under Pep Guardiola and Manchester City won the treble. But he's now taking the ship to be his own man and uh less chairman has said enzo brings in a combination of personality method and ambition that meets extremely well with the footballing direction we are looking to take his philosophy has been built over a rich and varied career including an outstanding education as a coach and fits with the vision we have for the next chapter in leicester city's history uh, enzo went on to say i'm very excited because of the club i'm joining and um, because we have a big season ahead of us at the beginning, the target is to play the best way we can. From there, we can build day by day our idea and our philosophy. And the most important thing is to try and win games. First of all, we're going to give 100%, absolutely, because the club deserves this. It's our job and our duty to do that. Then, as I say, day by day, step by step, absolutely, we're going to improve. Um, First of all, uh, another man under Pep's uh, coach inside is now taking the first team managerial role. Surprised or certain that this was going to be the right appointment? Well, a little bit surprised because obviously if we, ironically, in the way these circles in football work, about a week ago, he was the heavy favourite for the Celtic job, which has now been taken by Brendan Rodgers going back for a second spell. So I think a week or so ago, a lot of us thought he was going to Celtic. Um, that was widely reported. But... It's an interesting one. I don't really know whether I'm convinced by it. You know that, and I know you don't, but you know I like my Italian football and he had a pretty disastrous brief managerial stint in his other role at Parma. And, you know, he had some big names and was one of the favourites in that league and was really struggling with them in the second tier. Only lasted 14 games. The football, it's clear what he's going to try and play. And I know he alluded to the fact that they were going to try and be progressive and get results first and that he might not be able to do exactly what he wants straight away, which fair enough, it's good enough for him to concede that. But you look at the players that Leicester are going to have and you feel like the players that might best suit the way he's going to play are the ones that are almost certainly going to be going out the door this summer rather than the ones that he's going to be left with. Because you look at if Jamie Vardy or Kelechi and Nacho are going to be up front through the middle, we know what to expect from them. They're great strike strikers in behind. They're not going to really be too involved in link-up play, albeit in a, Ian Acho did a bit more this year. But you look at the, the biggest thing with Leicester is that probably unlike the other two squads that have come down from the Premier League, and going back to your point of being too good to come down, is they're going to be picked off for a lot of top players. And Leeds and Southampton aren't going to have that. So for Maresca, probably the biggest challenge, I guess the most similar comparison is Burnley last summer is that he's going to have to rebuild the playing squad, rebuild the style of play, and try and be successful from day one, which is not an easy thing, because the one thing Burnley had was some good, solid professionals and a fairly decent defence. And you had some decent players left over from their relegation there, the likes of Connor Roberts and Charlie Taylor, for example, as fullbacks. Whereas here, Leicester's defence has been their weakness for two or three years and that is my big concern for them because he hasn't got that solid base to build off and 
Burnley started last year with drawing every other game for the first 15 before going on a big run while they got the attacking bit right. And I'm not sure he's going to have the same luxury here. So I'll be honest with you, I'm a little bit worried. I know they're the heavy favourites to win the league at the minute because they've still got Madison and Barnes and whoever else on the books going forward. Dewsbury Hall, someone we've seen before at Luton as well. But how many of them are going to be there in the new season? How much of that money are they going to get to replace them with? Because they didn't invest last summer. They've already released a fair few players. Yuri Tielemann's been another creative one from that. I think he's got his work cut out because he's in as a manager, which suggests he's going to be given a, a big say in recruitment. And it's a pattern we're noticing a bit more this summer, really. But I think he's got a lot of work to do off the pitch, as well as trying to change the style on it, which is essentially two jobs in one. Yeah, he's got that history of being in a championship. He was at uh, West Brom yep. for a brief time. So he knows, well, I say he knows the league. It was fucking 20 years ago, should I say. It was, so the championship's a lot different compared to when it was. Uh, and he, was he probably wasn't there. thinking about coaching at 23 or however old he was. Then no, either. but he's got experience obviously playing uh, obviously English teams as well. Yeah. Playing against English teams. He, he, played, uh, he scored twice from, uh, against Millsborough in the UEFA Cup final for Seville. So uh, he... He, I'm sure he's going to remember that when he goes to the Riverside come uh, next season. So I'm sure he would have done his research. I'm, I'm sure he would look at the league last season and gone, do you know, we can probably, as you said, probably do a Burnley, could do a Luton, could do a Sheffield United and get back into the, well, get into the Premier League. But considering the style of play as what he's looting on, as I said, it's going to take time. Do you feel like Leicester will give him time compared to like other, like, for example, Watford and not give the managers time or do you think he, he will actually get back the season and see how he'll get on, how he progress, and obviously the aim is for top two. Yeah, I mean, I think as long as they're in that top six mix, because let's be fair, that top of the table is going to be, I think, a lot tighter this year with the teams that are in there, then I think he'll keep the job for the short term. I mean, Leicester have generally been quite loyal with managers. There was talk about Rodgers going a long time before he did. And you've got to be fair to them as well. I know we criticised the Dean Smith one. There are few appointments before they've generally got right. The Ranieri one obviously led to incredible success. The Nigel Pearson one when they were in the championship to get them up and then survive was a pretty good one. And then obviously the the Rogers one. Lord Claude Puyo, that was a great appointment. We're not going to talk about Claude Puyo. I said most of them, not all of them. And that's the problem with this is we don't really know what to expect because the championship's going to be so difficult next year. We would expect so many of those clubs who dwindled in mid-table last year unexpectedly. A lot of them who improved under new managers towards the end of the year to be better next season. Some of the others have done, look at a team like Norwich, for example. They're four or five signings in. They've made massive strides already. Whereas the three relegator clubs have still been sorting out their manager. So there's a long way to go. And they've, they've almost, the other clubs have got a head start on them. But the style of play, I don't think is going to be a huge issue because Vincent Company, another one of, Pep's playing disciples in this instance showed that that can be done in a championship last year, which previously was a bit of a myth that you couldn't do it, where it's not true at all. You can play anyway and win. It depends who they keep, though, doesn't it? Let's be honest. If they turn up with an inform and wanting to play Barnes, Madison, Ian Acho, Vardy, Dewsbury Hall, they're going to roll over a lot of teams. But a lot of those didn't play like they wanted to be there last year. Some of them couldn't stay fit. And defensively, they were a mess. And if they don't have a solid base, they're not going to be in the top two because there are too many sides in a championship who are well-organised, who can keep a clean sheet. We look at a team like that bored us at several occasions last year, like Preston, who just ground out nil-nil draws and got into the playoff mix. And Leicester are going to have to find a way to break those teams down because we're pretty football. I know Swansea's passing stats are a good example of it. You've got to be able to deliver chances and you've got to be able to deliver goals. You've got to make sure you're not conceding, which for me is the biggest priority for Maresca this summer, despite the football he wants to play. Yeah, I think the recruitment's got to be key. The result, I, don't, I don't think the philosophy of playing matters. I think it's literally for Leicester next season is results. And it's not that different to Roger's style, is it? Let's be brutally honest. He played good football you, for the you, most part. What do you think he he would actually copy uh, Pep's style? Considering Pep just won a treble. No, I mean you we'll can't have his own way. 
you can't copy Pep's style in, in the championship because Manchester City are the only side that can do what they do effectively because they've got the players who are capable of doing it. And Leicester, particularly at the moment in their defence, have not got the capability to play out, albeit they could add some very good players in. It's going to be, as you say, entirely down to recruitment. They've got to reinvest the money that they're likely going to get for Barnes and Madison. I mean, they'll do very well not to bring in at least 100 million from transfers this summer. And then it's just whether they can reinvest a third of that sensibly on a couple of good defenders. But it's whether they go for the the big names or whether they go for sensible signings. And we just don't know what to expect because Leicester didn't really do anything transfer-wise last year. So we've not got much to base it on. No, absolutely not. But it's time for our prediction. Obviously, first year, do you think he obviously lasts the whole season? And secondly, do you think he lasts the three years? Well, last the three years, no. Last the season. See, I feel bad now when we answer this question because we nearly always say no, but the average lifespan of a nine, championship nine out manager ten times we're right. It's not a season. So uh, my question is, I'm looking at this like, you remember the West Brom Darren Moore situation where they were up in like third or fourth and they thought they should have been in the top two. So they sacked him come January, February. I can see that sort of thing occurring. I think they'll be in the mix. I don't think they're going to be the title winners based on the players I'm assuming they're, lo- they're going to lose and the fact they've got so much more to do than the other clubs. But then if Leeds and Southampton don't appoint a manager soon, then they're going to be in a mess as well. I think Leicester are going to be in the playoffs, possibly not in the top two. And whether they pull the trigger on Maresca in sort of February, March time in the hope to have a proven promotion specialist when they go into the playoffs, I don't know. But there's so many clubs in the championship next year that are going to be fighting for promotion it's not like this year where you're going to have other teams sneaking in obviously we benefited from that hugely but there's going to be a resurgence or a reaction from the likes of West Brom Norwich and even Watford to an extent Middlesbrough now they've got Michael Carrick for a full season should be right up there Leeds and Southampton are going to have similar squads so should have a bit of a head start mariska has got a lot of work to do. I think he does a solid job. I think he gets them in the top six. But I'm not sure he sees out the season. I think they'll panic just before and try and get someone else in for the playoffs. Unless they're playing unbelievable football. No, I think he would give him the season, to be honest. Um, Leicester's, Leicester's not really that club that no, gets rid true. of managers that's true. after one season. It's like, like They do give their guys a chance. So... I can't see him going this, this season unless it, he's completely struggling and mid table come um, December. But even if you're mid table come December, I wouldn't take the hit on that as well because you look at you can be in the mid table at, at Christmas and make the playoffs come May. It's not if, hard. If they're mid table in December, it'll be gone because the biggest thing about the championship as an owner is holding your nerve, isn't it? Because most don't see it like that. And how many did we see this year when there were? Even going back to Rob Edwards, 10 games in, and I know it's Watford, but he got sacked a point outside the playoffs and they got worse. You know, there's other teams, they always do it. Even Bilic then after it, they always do it. Teams just panic. Well, half the league uh, lost their match. <laughs> we done far. This should not be a, a reoccurring. <laughs> Basically a weekly series. Isn't it, this should not be a series. But unfortunately, it is in the championship. But for Leicester, I think if they get do get promoted on the Maresca, I think uh, mid table, and then if he keeps that style of play, what we're, we're anticipating, he could obviously push for like a Brentford and, and go for Europe, um, Brighton, should I say, and head for Europe. But we'll have to wait and see. That's a bit too ambitious on my side, but I'm just trying. I'm just trying to play devil's advocate that if he does give a year and get promoted, it's but just... if they get stuck in that rot oh, in the yeah. championship, it, it could be very hard for us to see. Yeah, it's just, it's so hard to tell with Leicester compared to probably the rest because there's so much to do off the pitch in terms of transfers. We we know that four or five of those big players are going to go and then it's a completely blind guess, isn't it, as to whether they're going to replace them well and what level of replacement they're going to bring in. So that's probably why it's a rare occasion where we actually disagree a little bit. Absolutely. But there are thoughts on the hiring of uh, Enzo Mareska at Leicester City. Let us know in the comments how you think he would do at the role at King Power Stadium. So I say Filbert Street, that's completely wrong. But at the King Power, uh, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the Honest Football Podcast, and you can follow us on Twitter at Honest Football Free. And we'll see you next time.